So I'm sure you guys know who Dr. Phil is. I mean, he's probably one of the biggest names in the world at this point. I mean, who doesn't know Dr. Phil? And I think most of us can agree Dr. Phil seems like a pretty respectable guy. You know, he's smart. He knows what he's talking about in most situations. Well, it seems like with what happened today, that might all change. I mean, literally hashtag fire Dr. Phil is trending on Twitter right now. And if you don't know already, the reason this entire thing is happening and why he's pretty much getting canceled on Twitter right now is because he went on Fox News earlier today to do some kind of interview about the corruption and just, you know, give his thoughts on it. And I mean, right there, in my opinion, is the first mistake. Because according to Google, Dr. Phil is a doctor in clinical psychology, not pandemics and deadly viruses. He is not a disease expert. Just because he's famous and has doctor in his name doesn't mean he's qualified to talk about this kind of stuff on national television. Now, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the first few seconds of this interview here. And in this part of the interview, what he's saying is actually making complete sense, you know? This is before he kind of went off the rail. This is invisible. I can't show you an x-ray of depression. I can't show you an x-ray of anxiety. But the fact of the matter is, the longer this lockdown goes on, the more vulnerable people get. And it's like there's a tipping point. There's a point at which people start having enough problems in lockdown that it will actually create more destruction and actually more death across time than the actual virus will itself. So from what I understand, what he's saying here is that keeping people locked up for months in the end is going to be worse than just letting people roam around during this virus. Now, I mean, this is the kind of stuff he's a doctor for, so I'm not really going to question him on it, but I do find that kind of hard to believe. You're telling me just letting people go out and live normally during this whole pandemic would actually end up up being better I, I, th that's kind of hard to believe now this next part of the interview th this is what we're looking for here this is what's getting him canceled on Twitter right now and this is the reason that people want him fired so basically as you're about to see he just starts throwing random numbers out there I mean he's clearly reading off his phone during this but the numbers he's throwing out there are so inaccurate it it's unbelievable Pe 250 people a year die from poverty and the poverty line is getting such that more and more people are going to fall below that because the economy is crashing around us. And they're doing that because people are dying from the coronavirus. I get that. But look, the fact of the matter is we have people dying. 45,000 people a year die from automobile accidents, 480,000 from cigarettes, 360,000 a year from swimming pools. But we don't shut the country down for that. But yet we're doing it for this. And the fallout is going to last for years because people's lives are being destroyed. So, I mean, when you listen to that without putting an ounce of thought into it, maybe it makes sense to a few people. But I mean, just when I listened to that, those, those, some of those numbers just sounded ridiculous. So I went ahead and wrote down all these numbers he just threw out there and Googled the actual numbers. So the first statistic that Dr. Phil dropped on us here was that apparently 250 people die to poverty each year in the United States. Now, I feel like immediately to most people, that should have been a red flag. I mean, 250 people? Really? That, that sounds accurate? Really? That one just completely checks out? No questions asked? Well, with a 10-second Google search, I was able to find that the number of people who die from poverty each year in the U.S. is actually closer to 133,000. How can you be that far off? He's literally reading off his phone the same thing I'm doing, and his numbers are just drastically wrong. Now, the next two stats that he had for us were that 45,000 people died of car accidents, and the only one that he actually got correct was when he said 480,000 people die from cigarettes each year. That is the only statistic that was correct. Now, here's the real kicker. The last statistic that Dr. Phil has for us was, and I quote, 360,000 a year from swimming pools, but we don't shut down the country for that. 360,000 people die in swimming pools each year. Does, is that something that just shouldn't be questioned? Does that, does that not need to be fact-checked at all? Over a quarter of a million people die in swimming pools each year? Did we just all forget how to swim all of a sudden? Well, I mean, believe it or not, who could have guessed it? He he couldn't be further from the truth, actually. Remind you, he was reading off his phone for this statistic when he said this, but the number is not 360,000. It is closer to 3,600. Not to mention, he's trying to use these statistics as an excuse for why we shouldn't have the country shut down. Does he not realize that the reason the country is shut down is so that we don't spread the virus more with people interacting out 
out in public? I mean, car accidents, swimming pool deaths, and cigarette smoking aren't contagious. We're not social distancing from swimming pools. Anyway, that's where I think we're gonna go ahead and wrap up this video. Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe if you're brand new to the channel. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at RelexOnYT. And other than that, I'll catch you guys in the next video. I'm out.